thing, dude. Yeah, that's interesting. You want to talk now? <laughs> because before, look, I just wanted to make sure we got some quality content on the podcast. I mean, if you're going to tell me something super funny and interesting, might as well be on the podcast. Well, it's every conversation we have, so maybe you should stop <laughs> worrying about it. True. Oh, are you pissed? <laughs> Let's start off. You're okay. Pissed. No, I was going to say, can we talk about the slapper of a song, I'm Ready by AJR was? Oh. I'm ready. Mm -wee. Yeah, that's a sick song. Yeah. She's not an AJR fan. Okay. Look, you and I d disagree about a lot of things. How you, AJR is good. I only know their hits. Okay. I'm saying. So. But they suck. <laughs> just kidding. All right, brother. No, they're just like. Pretty we basic. Won't, we won't get into it. Okay. Because, you know, I don't want to be negative. Why? Because people are going to disagree with you in the comments? Yeah, I'm tired <laughs> of the hate, okay? Yeah, bro, you got flamed a couple times. Dude, people got so pissed about the whole mall thing. That was funny. That was funny. <laughs> I'm all like, what are some casual things you could do? I'm like, the mall? Everyone's like, you idiot. <laughs> I would never go to the mall with you, okay? I love, I love how you were just like throwing out an idea for where <laughs> to go, and people are like, the mall? I'm like, I've never taken a girl to the mall. <laughs> but what I have done is taken a girl to Walmart. And uh, I've taken a girl to Target, okay? I dated a girl for multiple months after I took her to Walmart for the first time. I don't know First date was Walmart. If, guys, guys, advice for the men. If you can't make Walmart fun, you're doing it wrong. Woo! That like, is spicy! I like that a lot. That's a great point. That's a great Seriously. point. Seriously. With all the resources that you have inside of a Walmart, there's everything at your disposal. Bro. We don't talk about that enough. You, if you're a w man, woman, or child with any need in the world, you go to Walmart and that need is fulfilled. Yeah. I love Literally Walmart. anything. That's and a if, great point. And if you could take a girl there and make the most mundane, normal thing, shopping Absolutely. at Walmart, fun and exciting, she wants you, dude. Dude, that's a, that's a very valid argument. Very valid. So, starting off with fire. I love, I love the honest. flames that are coming from the start of this podcast. <laughs> it's <Ouchie>. hot. <laughs> <Ouchie. laughs> it's hot. No, I, I really do love to hear those things. <laughs> Glad. <laughs> Glad. I do that a lot. I, I state how I feel, and then I just stop. <laughs> That's it. So, oh, man. No, there was uh, man, a lot of people disagree with me. It's really me. not about what you're doing. It's about who you're with. Wow. Well. 100%. It's, just, it's really not. And that's why I can take a girl to the mall so all y'all can shut up. Not that I would. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, that I ever have. <laughs> so I'm like, still afraid of them. <laughs> not that I would. <laughs> Oh, that's, that's too good, bro. Bro, so... We need to talk. Yeah. Uh, we'll just jump right into this. Let's just jump right in. Let's talk about No Way Home. Spider-Man. Yes. Can, can we have some... I need some prerequisite thoughts here to get off my chest about Spider-Man. Okay. And and I'll ask you the same questions. I, I have plenty to say about this. Plenty. When Amazing Spider-Man, right? Andrew Garfield, second one. Well, well we're starting with two? No, no. <laughs> yeah, we're starting from the beginning. <laughs> I, okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. When Amazing Spider-Man came out, the second set, the second trilogy. Okay. I was like, my friend was like, dude, these are w so good. And I'm like, yeah, but they're probably not as good as the originals. And he's like, they're better. And I'm like, they're not. Yeah. And he's like, when's the last time you saw the originals with Tobey Maguire? I'm like, well, it's been a while. He's like, let's watch them. And then you tell me which one's better. <laughs> and we did. And at the time, bro, yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, these kind of are awkward. The first ones, right? Yeah. But I mean, but, but Tobey Maguire is goaded. I mean, yeah, you can say what you want about Toby. The thing with Toby is he's just the OG. He's amazing. Like, he he brought something. He was the first live action superhero really ever. Like, honestly. Well, am I wrong? Well, they've had like Superman's live action Superman's from like 1950. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first. And they had Superman movies in the 90s. I know, but like with the way that it was filmed, like the CGI, it's different. It changed. It changed. You know what I mean? Everything. Like it just felt like a real superhero movie. Yeah, it felt like the way like, they are today. Okay, yeah, May maybe that wasn't the right choice of words, but I think you know what I mean. It was like yeah, yeah. it was like this dawn or this era of superhero movies that were and were, were are to come from based off of that, right? Yeah. But yeah, you can say whatever you want about Bully McGuire. <laughs> the dude is an OG, okay? Yeah, yeah, and big he, time. he, I think he, he, honestly, all things considered, I think he did a really great job with that role. Mm -hmm. He was maybe a little bit too serious. Like I, I get how like you know, and Tom Holland's the opposite, and I get that. But he brought like a seriousness and like a sensitivity to being Spider-Man, and like a responsive like a responsibility ness. Like he he carried and he took that calling serious. Yeah. And like he put everything he had into it. And, did and that's job. something that I don't think and I don't want to get into it quite yet. 
bad suddenly I don't think that Tom Holland does at all. No. But he he's brought like a depth to Spider Man that yeah, yeah. I don't think Tom Holland has. Here's my Boy McGuire is I agree. He's you know he's just the OG. He's the OG. He and is. Andrew Garfield is a is amazing. Okay. Yeah. Is amazing, dude. And the Amazing Spider Man is amazing. Amazing Spider Man. When I watched, I think it was what is it? Two or three of those? Two. There's two. I wish they made three. Well, hang on. When I watched those two, I was like, dude, like, this show makes me want to be Spider Man. Like, Amazing Spider Man was so good. And that's my gripe with the whole Tom Holland one. I love Tom Holland as an actor, as a person, even. Wow. Great guy. Um, one of my best friends. <laughs> yeah. And I love him in the in the whole like MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe stuff. Um. But I cannot, and it's not his fault. I just can't get on board with the way they wrote it, where he's like an immature, quirky, awkward high school kid, which maybe that's how it's supposed to be from the comics. But I'm like, but I like Andrew and Toby and how they're like a little bit more mature, a little bit more serious, right? Yeah. It's like Andrew Garfield was like a, a, a bro. Dude, I could not say the same about Tom Holland. Andrew Garfield killed Spider-Man. When in a, I in think the of most it, positive way. When I, I, he nailed it. When I think <clears> of Spider-Man, I don't think of Tobey Maguire, and I don't think of Tom Holland. I think of Andrew Garfield. So good. I'm like shaking. <laughs> Spider-Man first came out in 2002, the Tobey Maguire one. Yeah. I was four years old. Wow. I was walking around with the disc, with the copy, showing everyone I had Spider-Man, which was a big deal at the time. Yeah, like yeah. the first Spider-Man was a huge deal. Yeah, yeah. And obviously it was a big deal because in 2007 was the next one. And then, I'm sorry, 2004 was the next one. And then 2007 was the third. And they all killed. They all did great. Yeah. And I'm a big fan. I went back and watched them and they're all really good. Mm -hmm. Toby earns his villains. He grows with Aunt May, with Ben, with Dude. MJ, with his best friend dying. It's been out 15 years, guys. Come on. <laughs> Everyone's like, spoilers. <laughs> Wait a minute. But I'll tell you what. When I saw the first Amazing Spider-Man, the Andrew Garfield one, in theaters in 2012, it was a spiritual experience for me. Holy crap. He just has like a swag. Yeah, and he just carries so cool. himself so different. Like, he is kind of quirky and, like, he's a little bit nerdy with, like, his camera and yeah. kind of how he talks to Gwen is, like, a little bit awkward. But And it's kind of hard to put into words. It's, like, the intangibles. It's just his body movements, even in the suit. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. way he, the way he interacts with his villains during fights, he takes it serious, but he's also, like, himself. But he just carries himself so Peter Parker-esque, yeah. even when he's Spider-Man. Well, I think he's a... Like actually amazing Dude, actor he's, he's amazing have you seen it you've seen him in other films shawshank yeah, redemption yeah, yeah. well uh, uh social network yeah Dude. tick tick boom is the new one he's in it's not shawshank redemption what am i thinking of hacksaw ridge i'm sorry yeah i was like shawshank yeah. in 1990 <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry hacksaw no, ridge well i saw a tiktok that was like andrew garfield doesn't need moving lenses because you know how like the eyes and the new ones like move around he's like doesn't need those to, he like, didn't need them because he's like the way he acts is so it's like crazy perfect dude i love that guy and and, and, the, and the beef was like well, Tobey Maguire is the best Spider-Man, and Tom Holland is the best Peter Parker. And like, I, and I, I see the argument there, because, dude, you go back and watch Spider-Man 1, 2, and 3, Tobey Maguire scraps like no one else. <laughs> yeah. His fights are brutal, and he has, yeah. like, zero remorse. Like, they call him Boy Maguire. <laughs> the things, you go back and watch the clips of his fights, they are, like, brutal. Yeah. Like, he's f pulling left and right like you would not believe. Like, he's trying to kill these people. Yeah. And Andrew Garfield, like, in the way he fights and, and just, like, his ideas and the way he does, like, the tech, like, the first one mm -hmm. to actually build his webs and, like, how he goes about that. Yeah, what, Dude. what's your opinion on that? Because I I like Tobey Maguire having it be, like, it's natural. Organic, yeah. yeah, that's that's so sick. I'm that glad like, that they addressed that in the movie because I was always yeah, something like, where is it coming from? So I thought it was good. I like the mechanical because, I like, it makes more sense to me, mm -hmm. even though he is a spider, right? Like... Essentially, he's a spider. Yeah, it's just like one less power that he got. He got super strength, spidey senses, and climbing. And then I guess they didn't, like the two new no. ones didn't get like the other, like the power, the main thing that spiders do. So right. it makes sense to me that I'm like, it'd just be built in. Yeah. But no, I get like, there's a lot of comic books where they. And again, I'm impartial. Yeah. I, I'm fine either way. But I just liked watching him make it and kind of like figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then he kind of learns how to do it. And I like the fact that that makes him kind of vulnerable. Yeah. Because in the Amazing Spider Man 1, the lizard breaks one of them at, towards the end and he's like oh no and he can only use the other one yeah, so i kind of yeah. like how he has to like figure that out yeah and what's funny is they even put that same like story part into the originals remember toby Maguire has a moment where like he like it just he doesn't loses work it, yeah it's because of something with his mind and spider-man like, too kind of a stretch okay let but, me throw this at you who's yeah. your favorite villain we can even go into the tom oh we'll talk about that we can talk for i could talk for five hours about this Let's talk about your favorite all-time favorite Spider-Man villain. Okay. That you've so seen. So here's a problem, though. Okay. I have not seen one of the new Spider-Mans. 
I've seen No Way Home. I have not seen the one before it with Jake Gyllenhaal. Never oh, seen Mysterio? it. Mysterio? Which is sucks because Dude, the new one kind of starts right after that. We need to watch that, bro. Out of, out of the three Spider-Mans, that's... Okay, uh, No Way Home's amazing. <laughs> I'm not going to argue <laughs> that. Uh, okay. No Way Home's amazing. But my personal favorite is Far From Home. Out of Tom Holland's, I like that better than No Way Home. I so do. Far From Home is... With, and I know I'm, I'm crazy Mysterio. for saying that. I think it's... I mean, how can you not have an all-time banger when you bring Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire... Doc Ock, like, oh, when you have all those in your back pocket, you're going to make an amazing movie. Dude. But uh, you take all those nostalgic things away, and what do you have? It's not, I mean, it's not, yeah, without it, it's like, what's the movie, right? I mean, I know I know lots of the story in it, but, like, yeah, Far, Far From, from Home. Home has got a great story arc. I love Far From Home. I got I to gotta see it. Um, Mysterio is Mysterio's sick, but I don't think he'd be your favorite. He's not mm. my favorite. No, he's not. Yeah. So let's discount him. My favorite is definitely Green Goblin. Ooh, William Defoe, bro. Will yeah. I just learned that like a week ago, by the way. Yeah, William Defoe. I was calling William my whole life. Dude, Luke was yeah. My little brother was all William Defoe, and I was like, it's Willem, which he is a weird name. name. Willem, Willem. But yeah, he his his acting is so good. Ooh. Like when he's like sad and like normal, but then he gets into like the Green Goblin mode. Like he's like he's so intense. He's perfect for it, dude. Yeah, his like alter ego. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, he's just, he's a psychopath. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, and when I was watching the first one, because I watched it again, I was like, "Oh, this guy's like normal." Like at the beginning, I was like, "Maybe like the serum has kind of made him weird." Yeah, and I was like, "No, this guy's actually insane, like scary insane." Yeah, and then you see him again in No Way Home, and he goes, Who's "Like at nuts? the end, okay, that scene in No Way Home where Peter stands up, and everything goes quiet, and they have that shot on his face, and nothing but his face, and everything else is blurry, and everybody's like, Peter, like what's wrong?" And he oh, gets sense. That Green Goblin had switched. That was the best scene in the movie. Bro, that was yeah, maybe aside it, from them. Well, I thought back. it was like the lizard's gonna come up or whatever. Like something's yeah, going same, on. Same, same, same. But then like you like he like dude, and then you see Willem switch. That that level of Spidey sense was dope. I loved watching that. Yeah, everything's quiet. Like, it's yeah. like the drone out. Dude, that uh, reminded me. That was a great. I forgot about that, dude. Um, yeah, bro. I No Way Home is like that type of movie where like you go to your friends and you're like, what if they did this and they did it. Dude, it's w and and to, and to think this has been being built up for twenty plus years, right? Yeah, dude. I can't believe they pulled it off, I and know. they did a great job. No Way Home is going to be an all time, one of the all time best movies of all time. <laughs> one of the best movies of all time. Yeah, for sure. Superhero 100%. or not, they did a great job. I want to know something interesting. If you think about it, the first MCU movie was Iron Man. Yes. But now that it's the multiverse brings now it's Spider Man too. Now it's Tobey Maguire. See, you see what I'm saying, though? It is crazy. kind of the first, you know? Yeah, it is crazy. Okay, here's my beef with Tom Holland and the MCU universe, okay? Yeah. Let's look at Tobey Maguire. The first movie, and again, I have, I really have been a diehard Spider-Man, my, like, my whole life. I, yeah, diehard Spider-Man fan. What'd I say? A diehard Spider-Man? Yep. <laughs> I've been a diehard <laughs> Spider-Man my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> but there's pictures of me on Christmas when I'm three or four, and I have, like, the web shooter, and I know that's not unique, but I'm just saying that. I'm not just talking out of anything here. Yeah. Yeah, I had, like, the web shooter, like, the spray, the silly string spray thing. I had, like, decked out everything. My room was Spider-Man. Like, Yeah, whew. so you're a fan. I love, I just love the time. series. I love the character, okay? Yeah. And you're right. There has to be a good balance between Peter Parker and Spider-Man. Because even though they're the same, they, they switch a little bit, obviously. Yeah. Let's look at, to let's look at Tobey Maguire. The first villain is Green Goblin, mm -hmm. which he was connected to from his friend Harry, who he knew his whole life. Yeah. I would say he earned that villain as it goes on, as he fights him throughout the movie, as he saves people from him, um, as MJ is involved in it. I think that he's involved with the Green Goblin basically from the time he knew Harry because they had a connection there, right? right? He earned that villain. He had a chance to team up with him. He chose not to. Like, right. Doc Ock, he's there for the pre for the presentation. That's my favorite Spider-Man, by the way, is the is Doc the Ock Spider-Man 2. It's so good. Um, when the chip breaks, right, and then he goes crazy and Doc Ock becomes Doc Ock, he earned that villain because he, he's the one who initially stopped. I don't know if you remember this. He's the one who initially stopped from, you know, the, the sun or the, the yeah. power of the sun in my palm. <laughs> he palm my hands, yeah, yeah. Spider-Man was there and he stopped it and then he tries to stop Doc Ock throughout the whole movie. He earns that villain. Yeah. Sandman and Venom, he earns both of those villains in the third movie by knowing them and by trying to stop them from the beginning, okay? Right. So this isn't anything new. Andrew Garfield Spider-Man earns the lizard. He gives him the formula to become the lizard. I don't know if you remember that. No. And again, maybe I changed my mind. Maybe that's my favorite Spider-Man of all time. I love Amazing Spider-Man 1. It's, oh. Dude, it's insane. When he makes the lizard, 
and he, it's so good. Okay, I, I, watch I officially changed my mind. I mean, Spider Man One is my favorite of all time. I love Spider Man Two. Maybe yeah, it's because yeah. I watched it recently. Okay, sorry, I digress. He creates the lizard, and then he has to stop him, mm -hmm. right? And the second one, Electro falls into like the seal or the the eels, right, and becomes him. Mm. And he, and then, but he knew Max, the guy who became Electro, before he fell. So we already had a connection with him. Yeah, Harry Osborn, who becomes the Green Goblin, he knew him from the beginning. Like when they were childhood friends, he earns these villains. He right. earned them. So when they fight, it makes sense, and like you're emotionally invested. Okay. Let's jump to Tom Holland. This is the issue. Yeah. Okay. When so much of Spider-Man is built upon fighting villains and, you know, and the girl and Aunt May and everything, you have to be emotionally invested for yeah. these fights to make sense. The Vulture is Tom Holland's first. I could hardly get through this movie. The Vulture is Tom Holland's love interest dad, who he kind of figures it out towards the end, who he is. Didn't make sense to me. And the Vulture wasn't scary. Michael yeah. Keaton was not scary for me. I was like, yeah. eh, he's okay. Good guy. Second one, Mysterio. Mysterio was pissed at Iron Man the whole movie. He didn't really care about Tom Holland, only he cared about him because Tom Holland was trying to stop him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you haven't seen it, but yeah. It just, I was like, okay. Third movie, who are all these villains? They're not his. They're not his villains. Tom Holland doesn't have a single villain of his own. It's true, though. That's my issue. That's I, why I can't hop on to this MCU Tom Holland thing. It feels like, because it's similar to like what I was saying with him being like, immature and young it's like it feels like he's a side character in the mcu and now we're making movies about him yes he doesn't really like the he doesn't have an effect with the avengers the same way that iron man captain america thor do yep i mean thor's got like four or five movies or whatever right and it's like it makes sense because he's a major player in the avengers and they kind of just tossed tom holland in there fighting these battles that aren't really his right so really the only villain he's ever had if you're stretching it is the vulture but even then it was kind of a weak connection weird yeah. It was just weird. And yeah, and honestly, the whole the dynamic between Ned, Tom, Spider Man, and freaking MJ, like I just don't really like that group. Ned is just not funny to me. No. They're awkward. He just doesn't work for me. Why I'm sorry, MJ's Zendaya is gorgeous and she's great. Yeah. Dude, Big time. they made a mistake. MJ's just not Zendaya is not a good MJ. No. She's just not MJ. Well, I, well, it doesn't work. I guess it's like, a, it turns out, like, I guess it's like a different MJ. It's not Mary Jane. It's like, uh, yeah, I know. It's like some like other show. Either way, like, she's supposed to play a certain part. And I mean, I probably lack comic book knowledge. So what do I know? But the point is, is that sometimes her attitude, like, she comes bro, off as annoying. like a weird condescending, like trying to be sarcastic. Yeah, she's her just annoying. And just don't, in no way home, it kind of worked because they were kind of together at that point. And I was like, okay, like, I can see that. That, dude, those two people would never work out in real life. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, those two would never work out in real life. I was good. <laughs> Tom Holland and Zendaya would never work out. Even but, though they are working out. Yeah, you know, those characters. Good for my boy. Yeah. Holy, what a bro. What, dude. Did you, have you what seen a, the video of him like manifesting yes, everything? Where yeah. he's just like, oh, I would like to play Spider-Man one day. Play Uncharted it. is my favorite and He's like, who's your like uh, celebrity crush? And he's like, probably Zendaya. Boom. Got her. I'm just like, my boy is crushing life. Dude, and good for him. No hate towards Tom Holland. None. But... It's and more the writers than anything. I'll bring it back. Yeah, I'm just pissed that he's with Sendaya. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous. So, yeah, I don't like that group. Aunt May is kind of weird. Like, she shouldn't be yeah. like she is. Well, and maybe like, it's just because from earlier movies. Aren't all the other ones, like, she's, like, older? Yeah. And this yeah. one, she's, like, kind of, like, hot. Aunt May? Yeah. And he's, like, supposed to be, like, towards the end of high school, going into college. Hey. So, I loved how they brought Andrew and Toby back. That was great. They did a good job with how it kind of played out through the story arc. There's some amazing scenes with those guys. Dude. Remember the one where they're talking about it and like, okay, I love the the inside jokes when when uh, he's like, man, you guys are so awesome. Like, I'm just like, I'm just dumb. Like, I'm, I'm like a lame Superman or <laughs> Spider-Man. And then he's like, no, man, like, get yourself talk up. He's like, you're amazing. You're like, amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> I was like, dang, dude, that's so sick. That was funny. Because yeah. he's an amazing Spider-Man. Right, all right. Yeah, um, that, that was a good plug. That's a good plug. Dude, that's, that's so funny. Yeah, bro, that movie. Okay. I'm sorry. I got I got two more things. Tom Holland is not a good Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. The way he fights is weak. He doesn't have like any swag or coordination. It feels like to me not a lot of confidence. And dude, he's even a worse Peter Parker. Man, you are roasting this guy. I love him. <laughs> love him to death. He's not a good Peter Parker. Yeah. Can I give you my impression of Tom Holland? You can. You can try. Okay. He goes. Hey MJ, uh, um, uh, we need to go find the uh, the vulture and uh, uh, uh. That's actually like spot on. I can't like Rick and Morty. stand him as Peter Parker. Yeah, uh, he's like obnoxious. His 
high pitched voice that he tries to do. I'm like, dude, you're not 12. Yeah, yeah. You're like towards the end of high school. You're obviously ripped. You're supposed to be like 17, 18. Be a man. And he's just like constantly, and it's hard for me to watch because I don't feel like, I don't know if this is what they're going for, but I don't feel like safe. I don't feel secure. I don't feel like anything good's going to happen because he's so frantic. Mm-hmm. And he just overdoes it every scene where he's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, uh. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, my dude, like, chill. Like, you have, you're Spider Man. You're not, like you got powers, you're not bro. Iron Boy, right? Which he's been called because so much of it is built upon Iron Man. Like, dude, like, be your own guy. Like, you can uh-huh. figure it out. It's just hard for me to watch him because he just does not do a good job. And I don't know wh- why so many people love him as Spider Man. Yeah, they're obsessed with him. Not a good Spider Man, even more Peter Parker. But dude, I, last thing, I've been saying this. I wish I, I wish I would have filmed myself because it's true. <laughs> Andrew Garfield has been my favorite Spider Man, even before, even after Tom Holland. Like, even before this whole thing went over, where now Andrew Garfield's back and he's—I don't know if you know this—but he's getting like a bunch of love because you see Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and Tom Holland on the same screen, and you're like, dang, Andrew Garfield's the best. Oh yeah, there's no doubt. No doubt. And this isn't even an. An objective opinion. I'm sorry. This isn't even a subjective opinion. This is an objective opinion. Yeah, he's better. You're insane if you don't think Andrew Garfield is the best. The way he carries himself, his swag, the way he talks, the way he fights, his ideas, like the way he goes about living and, you know, he's like really unselfish and he tries to do the right thing and, and you know how freaking smart he is, bro? Yeah, bro. Like he has so many scenes like where he figures out formulas and he tries to figure out like his parents past. I feel like- It's amazing. I feel like they're all- Every Peter Parker is like the same. It's like they do the right thing. They're kind of smart, but like Andrew Garfield is like different. It's and it's really hard to explain. It is. Yeah. But he just has this confidence and this charisma, and he's funny and he's charming, but he's also like just kind of quirky, but in, in the right way. But he's cool. He's like the coolest Spider Man out of the three. And that's what people don't like is he's too cool. What? Why can't Spider Man be cool, man? And nerdy. And like the way that he's like studying and he's like laying like on top of a ceiling or he's like on the roof, just like kind of like the weird little things he does. Yeah, he's he's the best. And like his Spidey sense is just like it feels different to me. Like it I want to watch the Amazing tuned. Spider-Mans again. We're, we're, we, I mean, that's what we'll do tonight for the two man slumby. Two man slumby, dude. <laughs> but dude, I know it's a hot take, and I'm glad I really was going into this podcast thinking we were going to go head to head. Oh, really? Because nine out of ten people think Tom Holland is the best Spider-Man, or maybe seven out of ten do, and then the other two think that um, so Tobey Maguire is, and then the one percent is like Andrew Garfield's great. Yeah, yeah. Like you look on any social media, everyone rants and raves about Tom Holland. There are a couple OGs who are like, dude, Toby's the best. But now that again, No Way Home's come out, everyone's petitioning for the Amazing Spider-Man three to come out because it didn't officially get aired. Oh, that would be so sick. Because everyone's like, the Amazing Spider-Man two didn't do well in the box office, and people didn't like Electro and the Green Goblin. Dude, that Sp- the Amazing Spider-Man two is better than Tom Holland. Did he have an, a he, did he have a Green Goblin? In the end, yeah. Or did like he a kind of comes back. Oh, I gotta, I gotta watch that. Dude, it's so good, and people gave that series so much hate, and now everyone's giving it love because he's back. Like there's this huge like movement, like a hashtag like making the Amazing Spider-Man three. That's like huge now, that and apparently so they're gonna do sick. it. Really? Uh, there have been rumors, dude. And like you look at the Morbius trailer. Yeah, have you seen that? I have. Yeah, yeah, I saw it when it. And if you freeze on a frame, Oscorp, Harry Osborn's right. The the building is the same building that's in the Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, universe. So they're saying that that's going to be the third is where it mentions him at the end and then he fights him in the third. Bro. Dude. This is going to be legendary. I would lose my mind if Andrew Garfield came back. I freaking love Andrew Garfield. He's so sick. He's the best Spider-Man. And I will say it, gun to my head, I will say off cliff, he is without a doubt. There is no debate. Please, whatever you think, unthink. Whatever (laughs) you've learned, unlearn. There's just, there's no, there's no debate. I'm sorry. We're gonna we're gonna have some some mighty oh, opinions dude. and I, some I, of the I, comments, I, and we'll probably have to do a reaction podcast to all the comments that we're gonna get from this. That Two guys cool. who love Andrew Garfield, opposed to Toby, which we love Toby. Toby's the OG. Love Toby. And Tom Holland, it's gonna be a bloodbath in those comments, <laughs> and, I, and I'm here for it. Big time. Ooh, I love I love. Dude, it. I can't wait to see what people think. But no way home, certified banger. Don't get me wrong, it's yeah, yeah. gonna go down as one of the best. Also, spoiler alert: if you didn't already. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm Maybe put, at the start. I'll put big text. Okay. I'll put big text. Should we, I was should we put I was plug like, in here for when we edit? And we're like, hey, if you haven't seen No Way Home, don't listen to this episode because that's what we're going to talk about for the better part of half Basically of the better part. 25 minutes? Yeah. We got deep. And we could go even deeper, but <laughs> we'll spare our audience. 
these guys, someone who's never even heard or seen Spider Man, they're like, man, these guys are lame. <laughs> Losers. <laughs> Holy crap. Well, and here's my last thought go yeah. watch The Amazing Spider Man 1 and 2. Come back and tell me he's, come back right now and tell me he's not the best. You couldn't do it. And I forgot to add his chemistry with Gwen, with Emma so Stone. Good. Dude, that's Dude. how it should be. Toby Maguire and MJ, uh, Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst were like, they're okay. Yeah. MJ and Tom, not good. Awkward. Sunday and Tom, but dude, whatever they did for Andrew Garfield and Emma Stone was amazing. Well, they did Fire, it in real life. Fireworks, bro. They Dynamic. Yeah, they did it. I mean, so does Tom Hans. Yeah, but like they so did, did Tobey Maguire and Kirsten Dunst. Bro. Every Spider Man. Oh, can, <laughs> <wild>. <laughs> can I get cast? Can I get cast as Spider Man, bro? Not that I'm trying to act. Yeah, just for the love interest part. Whew, man, I'm, I'm happy we talked about that. Yeah. I'm happy you listened to me while I went off. <laughs> You're like, dang, bro, chill, calm down. I was like, nice. You gonna ask me who my favorite, favorite villain is? Yes. Doc you, Ock. Oh, he's sick. I think he had a different motive than the others. I think he was really chasing his dream. Yeah. I don't know if you remember, but he's like trying to like create the... He wanted the sun thing. Yeah, which like could energize the entire world, like pure, clean energy, which I thought was a kind of a cool concept that his motive was really to do the, the right thing. He just did it in the wrong way. Yeah. Or the when he got goblin. taken over by his legs. Uh, yeah. Arms. Yeah. The green tentacles. Sure. The green goblin just kind of went crazy. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to like destroy Oscorp for what they did to him and taking the company away. And that's one of my favorite memes. The I'm something of a scientist myself. Oh, that, that when they said that in the movie, I was like, let's go. <laughs> okay. No, no one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the meme, bro. Dude, but nobody laughed. Everyone was all. And what theater brother, were you in? Uh, Spanish Fork XD. Was it sold out? Yeah, there was a ton of people. Well, I don't know if it was sold out, but there was a ton of people. And dude, we were there, and like when that happened, I was like, yo, I looked at my little brother. I was like, it's so funny. We giggled, and like everyone's like, like not even paying attention. I'm like, that's a meme, guys. Did, yeah, hey, guys, this is a meme. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. No, but like my favorite meme is like the whole like, it's like, you can't do this to me. Oh, yeah. You know how much I'm sacrificed? <laughs> <laughs> that was so good, that scene, dude. <laughs> It's a great scene, bro. Oh, bro. I've seen, yeah, I've seen, the, I've seen those memes. They're great. Um, dude, when I saw Endgame, mm -hmm. the night it came out was the best cinematic experience of my life. Really? Sold out theater. And I, again, I'm not really into all the Avengers movie. I'm down for Spider Man. Yeah. I've seen maybe a third of them. Maybe. People stood up and cheered. Really? It was louder than a jazz game. Dang. People were going insane in certain parts. Like when Captain America picks up Thor's hammer, like. Oh, bro, that's legendary. You know what I mean? Like, apparently that's a big deal. And people lost their mind, and I was like, Dang, what? Yeah. The next big Marvel movie that's, like, the big one, I got to go to, like, opening night. That would be that would be so sick. See, and I went to this one, No Way Home, three days after release, and it was still sold out. In that. Yeah. And again, it wasn't like it was an endgame, but people, like, were cheering. Yeah, all of the ones that we were looking for for that day that we went were all sold out except for, like, the 11 o'clock one. It was, like, late at that's night. All we went to. Oh, you went late 11 at night? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was like the late one that still had seats up top. We had to go to the matinee at like 11 in the afternoon. Yeah, those were sold out. I mean, they weren't sold out. There was like front row seats, but nobody wants no. to sit. Yeah. Let's see like a very skewed version of it. Um, okay, so here I have a question for you. I mean, I know your answer for your favorite MCU like movie is probably Spider-Man. Like the, the favorite movie like set. Yes. Is Spider-Man. Favorite Avenger? Yeah. So uh, what's your favorite Avenger other than Spider-Man? Hawkeye. Really? Spider-Man's not my favorite Avenger because Tom okay. Holland's not my favorite Spider-Man. So okay. well, you see then, what I'm like, saying? What's your favorite like series of movies? It has to be Spidey. Spidey, yeah. What, the, the first two sets. Cut the third. No thanks. <laughs> I'm okay. Third, we don't need that. But my favorite, uh, my favorite Avenger, because okay. I don't really consider Spider-Man an Avenger. Yeah, yeah. No, same. Um, it's Hawkeye. Hawkeye well, is so sick, dude. He's Again, dope. he's got like a swag. He's just got, dude, the shot. He doesn't miss. <laughs> doesn't miss. <laughs> yeah, true. Dev, I watched. There's that one scene in Civil War. I think it is. You know where Iron Man and Captain America are fighting, and Hawkeye comes back out of retirement, and Iron Man's like, they're kind of like fighting, and he's like, "I thought you were, you know, shooting. I thought you were on the links playing golf." And he's like, "Yeah, shot 18, made 18. Couldn't seem to miss." <laughs> and then he pulls out his arrow, and he misses Iron Man by like that much. And Iron Man's, "Oh, well, I guess it was the first time for everything." And he's like, made you look. And then the other way comes like a truck. I'm like, yo. Dude, yeah, he's. <laughs> dude, Hawkeye's just. It's dope. like, he doesn't really have a superpower, but like he does. Dude, that's what's kind of great about him. Yeah. Is he's just like a freaking sniper, but there's nothing really different about him than an average guy. Yeah. And, but he's like, but he's, yeah, swag with it. I like the way you say that. There's, it's just different, dude. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, He's got like the explosive bows. I'm big on oh. uh, big on two people. Okay, I mean, who, I love I love Spider Man, but he's like nowhere near. Let's, yeah, Iron Man and Thor for me, because really? it's always been Iron Man for me. Because when Iron Man one came out, like Ooh. Iron Man one is so good. Bro, we might have to go watch that. <laughs> yeah, bro, <laughs> in the cave when he's building, dude. Dude, well, Ooh. just like the whole like, because you know I've always been like a big tech nerd growing yeah. up. So like to see someone like invent all this cool stuff and he's got all this money and like he's just like, he, I mean Robert Downey Jr. kills that dude, part. Dude. If there's a role made for a person. It's and Iron you Man, couldn't be played Downey by Jr. anyone else. It's Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, dude. For whatever reason, it just works. Well, and like wearing a suit that has all this tech and looks as cool as it does, and like when he like flies in, like ching, like lands. I'm like, dude, this guy's so cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, like, I love Iron Man, and Iron Man one's so OG. But then like, but then Thor, dude, he's like the he's the best. Like I don't think there's another Avenger. Like if they fought for real, Thor would beat anyone. Yeah, he's the strongest. The God of Thunder, and he's buff. And that hair. Yeah. <laughs> Wowzers. <laughs> Can't get over it. Yeah. yeah, he's great. I like Thor. My only problem with Thor was he just is really emotional. Like yeah. throughout all the movies, he kind of lets his emotions get the better of him. But dude, he's and been through the most. He's, I know. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, don't, I feel like that's why he's never able to really get the most out of himself is because mm. he's so he's got a sensitive block. and emotional. Well, honestly, if Loki would just like get the heck out of here. Loki's a real menace, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. If he would just leave. Loki's my favorite Avenger. <laughs> Dude, that guy. Okay, Loki's kind of dope though. Loki's like, way dope. The god just, of mischief. I just feel like, yeah, if like he would just leave everyone alone, it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> it's kind of his purpose. <laughs> yeah, bro. Dude, oh. have you seen his series, the Loki series? I've not. I've not seen very much Disney Plus. The Wanda series, WandaVision, the uh, WandaVision. Winter Soldier. No, nah. I'm sorry. The yeah, Captain Falcon. <laughs> that was, Captain Falcon. Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> what am I thinking of? Uh, there's isn't there a Hawkeye the, one? The Bucky and. Oh yeah, that's Captain Captain America. I know, but he, him and the Falcon. It's just maybe it's that the Falcon. Oh, I haven't I haven't seen that. The only thing I've seen on Disney Plus is um, and then Hawkeye, the Mandalorian. Oh, so I've missed basically everything that's new. Same. Okay, one last thing to say about Marvel. Star Wars and Marvel were bought by Disney, and I feel like ever since they did that, and there's nothing wrong with it because they've made amazing movies, and it's probably a lot of the same people that worked on them before. Yeah, but I just feel like they're pumping it out. Like they're making so many movies so fast that I'm huh. like. Are we getting the best quality we can? Mm. You know what I mean? Like they're just like, boom, 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 like three movies a year for each series. Like we're making, we're making series, we're making movies, and it's we're making too much. comebacks. Yeah, I'm just like, dang man, like that's a lot of crap. It's kind of in the same thought as when Burger King had, maybe they still have it. There are ten nuggets for a dollar. There is too much of a good thing. Yeah, because they're no longer good. It's like they have to cheapen them to make so many for so cheap. If there's ten of them for. A dollar? A that's, dollar? That's too cheap. There is such a thing as too cheap. Yes. The 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 three fifty. I, I like to be in that area. <laughs> yeah. The five dollar. I don't want. I don't want to eat ten cent nuggets. Speaking of fast food, I'm gonna say right now, I love four for four, and that is famous Wendy's deal. Yeah. Five dollar biggie bag is way better. That really hit different for you today. I love the five dollar biggie bag. It just it hits every. I mean, I get my burger, I get my side protein, mm-hmm. okay, chicken nuggets, I get my fries and my drink. That's only checks four. all the boxes. Hmm. Hang it's, on. it's a five dollar. Wait bag. a second. <laughs> yeah, this is the four so for four for more it's money. A more expensive four for four. Ah, yeah. oh! gotcha. <laughs> you're like, loser. Fool. Of course, you like the five dollar biggie bag because you're an idiot. <laughs> That's too good, bro. So yeah, I love Wendy's. I actually don't like Wendy's that much, but I love Wendy's. I had a good experience today. Yeah, it was, it was chicken decent. sandwich. Mellow oh, yellow, yellow like so good. Mellow yellow is a poor man's. Hmm. Yeah, it fits. Okay. I've, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like Mountain Dew. Poor man's Mountain Dew. Thank you. Yeah, but like. Yeah, I'm getting hungry. Bro, are we going to eat after this? And then edit? Is tonight going to be the best night of my life? I think so. <laughs> Get far from home on the back. Yo! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we have very many specifics, but I do want to just bring up the fact that. I have a couple. Okay. <laughs> that like you and I have hung out so much. Really not that much, honestly. But we've hung out enough. And we just connect with each other on, on a, a level that's different than anything else that like it really is from the beginning you and I have like adopted and everyone does this all friends do this but like we have adopted mannerisms from each other that like it's unconsciously unconsciously and I, I don't off the top of my head like I can't think of I, I, I feel like I told you one recently when we were over at Axis I think you did too like there was like one that I'm like dude I always do this and I think dang like that's that's Alex's thing but a big one is just vocabulary like words we use like, I'm pretty sure I never used mad before you. That's mad <laughs> That crazy, may not bro. be a good thing. <laughs> yeah, bro, I use that way too much. Mad, yeah, mad is like emphasizing 
It's saying like, like very extra, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's mad but crazy. But it's so much better. It's so much oh. more aggressive. <laughs> Which is like, okay, every every bro, every frat kind of bro says mad. Dude, it's like mad nice. Well, yeah, dude. we use it way more m- mature. Yeah, yeah. We're better at using it than other people. Right. <laughs> the way we say it. I got to remember the one. We were in, remember we were in the parking I know. I know. I, I can picture exactly what you're saying. And I was like, dude, like there's this thing that I do and it's, and I got it from you. Well, while you think of that. Something that you do is you, when you're describing something in a story or something that you do, you'll act it out in person and you'll make sound effects as you do it. Oh, yeah. So, for example, you'd be like, okay, and then when I was about to open my water, I went, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And you'll act this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I've caught on to that because it's like, it's very engaging, mm-hmm. right? And it's like fun to like listen to hear someone do that. Because anytime you do, I'm like laughing, right? Yeah. Even if the sound effects aren't good, which I'm not as good as doing them as you. But like, my dad was helping me with my band a little bit the other day. And I'm like, yeah, dad, we need to like put this panel into the side and like drill like zzz, zzz, zzz. And I need to drill. <laughs> and he was like, what the heck? And oh like, he gosh. didn't say anything about it, but I was like, I definitely picked that up from Gabe. And yeah, like when okay. I'm describing something now, I tend to make sound effects when I'm tell- retelling stories and stuff. Yeah, which yeah. I, li- I like that I picked that up. It's funny because there's a highlight I haven't shown you. I think I sent it to you. Remember, I'm like, I'm like, I love a good glass of milk. Good, good, good. Mm, yum. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, yeah. That could literally be like an ad. <laughs> mm, yum, yum. <laughs> Bro, that needs to get uploaded today. That's great. So yeah, that's that's a big one. I, I haven't really, I, I guess I don't really notice that you do it because I do it, so I'm like used to it. And maybe that's the same for you. Like when I do things that you do, you don't go, hey, I do that. It just like makes sense because you already do it, right? <laughs> yeah. I think a big one is just like, okay, so you and I roast each other all the time. Great. And like in in complete love. Right, it's not like we're trying to hurt each other's feelings, but like we like to throw shade a little bit. And when we do, like you're call each other out. You're always like, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, like kind of thing. Like, I, and I do that too. And so I'm like, oh, is that it? Was that what you're thinking of? <laughs> I think so. Okay. So I didn't that hear you. That's right. why I like stared at you. I was like, wait, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. You know, like, Sorry, dude. <laughs> you're like, no, I'm like, dude, don't interrupt me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When someone's throwing shade at you, or when you get interrupted, yeah, sometimes it's just. A- <laughs> That's a big one. Idea. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. It's good because I tend to roast and interrupt you as much. So that's good that <laughs> yeah. you caught on to that. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. for a while you try to fight work. it. But once you start to steer into the skid. Steer into the skid. Just like these snowstorms. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's crazy out there. You just lean into it. Let it happen. It works better. Did you see the Did you see the Amber Alert that we got for the snow squall? Did you get that? No, that's Northern Utah shiz. Okay. Dude, an Amber Alert came on, which for is a like. squall. It said a snow squall. It snowed for maybe two hours and it stopped. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So they got a little dramatic there, didn't <laughs> yeah. they? I was like, unless like somebody's kidnapped or someone's hurt or it's like evacuate, please don't send me an Amber Alert. Who really reads those? Can we be honest? I'm all Amber Alert. Dang. It's like somebody missing red car. I'm like, dang, never seen a red car. <laughs> <laughs> never seen one before. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> you see a red car? Huh. <laughs> Well, that's not it. Yeah, you're like, oh man, you kind of feel bad. Just like, think maybe I should like report something. But you're like, I don't want to get involved. Yeah. That's the problem. It's like, don't I, don't, hands dirty. I don't think Amber Alerts are very effective. Nobody's going to be like, you know what? We're on it. Kids, you hop in the gonna, car. We're going to find him. No, yeah, that's a good point. Most of the time, it's like, dang, that's crazy. No, oh, yeah, what with your day. Someone's missing. <sighs> <laughs> we probably, as a society, we should do a better job at really locking in on those. Yeah. Honestly, if everyone came together and was like super serious about it, I bet you people would be found and saved five times as fast. People are too selfish in this day and age. Yeah. Or well, in general, just all ages and days. Yeah, it's only other people. We're like way selfless. That's what we make this podcast. It's really for you guys. <laughs> yeah, not for us. You know, we don't do this for us. I say, yeah, I say we get into a little girl talk. <laughs> <laughs> girl talk, baby. Yes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start. This is something I've been feeling for a while. Okay, when you're single and when you're an adult, there's something missing. And maybe it's and, and it's not missing for everyone because I'm sure everyone gets like these feelings. And I've had these feelings recently. But basically what I'm trying to say is that there's a difference between dating around and seeing if there's anyone that you like and having a crush. Hmm. Right? And I think there's plenty of people that can have crushes at this age. And I've had a crush at this age where you're oh, like, I'm crushing right now. On me? Nope. <laughs> okay. A special little lady. Really? I am. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't wait to ask her out. I just can't. So, yeah. So it happens. And maybe it happens more often for other people. 
maybe it's because I'm not in school that I have this problem. Mm. Because in high school, there's like a bunch of people around. You're like, hey, who's going to be my crush? I always liked having a crush. I always liked having someone that I'm like, oh, they're walking down the hallway. <laughs> yeah. like, it's exciting, you know? Um, but when you're just swiping and dating and Instagramming, it's like there's never that feeling of like, oh, dang, like I get to see her. But then when you go to work, if you have a job, I, don't, I haven't had a job in months. Yeah. So, okay, I'm really putting myself in this situation. <laughs> When yeah, you have a job, I'm trying to help you here. You've got a job crush. You've got a school crush. If you're in college, you'll have crushes. But I'm like, but if I'm, if you're like focused on yourself and you're not really like being very social necessarily, you're going to miss out on having a crush. I want a crush. I don't want to just like date and like, just like be like, oh yeah, they're cool and cute. I'm like, I want to have that feeling like, bro, I get butterflies. And when they like come in the room, I'm like, dang, bro, like I got to make my move tonight. You know what I mean? Like that kind of stuff is exciting. But you don't get that very often when you're just like, yeah, that's a good point. It's been, it's been a while. With the parents. Yeah. And so it's really not that big of a deal, but I'm well, like, it's a big deal. I'll, I'll vouch for you. Thank you, bro. It's a big deal. That is a, that's a real pickle. I don't use that word lightly. Predicament. Nope. It's a, it's a big pickle. Oh, specifically a pickle. It's a pickle that you find yourself in when <laughs> you, I mean, you have access to a lot of, you know, communicating with a lot of girls, but you don't really have a crush. Yeah. And it's hard to have a crush over the internet. Yeah. I feel like a crush is more ideally more in person. Mm-hmm. It gives it's the butterfly effect. Yeah. Right yeah, in yeah. right in the in the stomach area. Like like okay. I won't I won't mention names. I said that so much because I don't Gotta keep, I, want, I want you to know that it's someone specifically that we know, but I'm not gonna tell anyone else. Oh, I already know who it is. Yeah. That's how well I know you. <laughs> you know me really well. I remember when that crap was going down, dude. Do you actually know? I do. Okay. Are you sure? Are you questioning me? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just tell your story. <laughs> like it's the little things like, oh yeah, we're good friends, me and this crush. And so there's nothing like awkward. There's not like, oh, I should go up and talk to her. It's like we hang out all the time. Uh-huh. But it's like the little things when like they look you in the eye and Uh-oh. it's like a little flirty. You're just like, freak, dude. <laughs> I really like this chick. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of stuff doesn't happen when you're like, oh, yeah, we matched and we went on a date and we went on two dates. It's like, and we went on three dates and we like started kissing and now we're kind of a thing. You never got to go through the crush phase. I love the crush phase. Hmm. And so what you're suggesting is that comes organically and from friendships usually. Yeah, organically, friendships, or just seeing them around, like being in the same class or working with them. So being a friend. <laughs> well, yeah, but like I've had a lot of crushes I had never talked to. I consider those people my friends. <laughs> friends deep down. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, dude, crush is way better. And I'm like, okay, people out there, help me. How do I have a crush without having to go through the bull crap of other people? Yep, I don't think that is possible, my man. <laughs> That's probably true. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to get a job. How do I get a crush, though? I got to move out and live in an apartment complex with a bunch of losers. Tried that. And it failed. There's, there's nothing worse than a person, again, if it's like an old granny who's like, hey there, kiddo, or like, oh, sweetie. Like, please call me sweetie. I love that. <laughs> Sweetie's nice. But yeah, somebody close to my age or my age, whether they're male or female, don't call me bud. Bud. Don't call me champ. Ugh. You call me buddy, I'm never, you are dead to me. Well, that's the big problem is that women have caught on to this. They're like, dude, men hate it when we call them bud. So we're going to call them bud all the time. And they that's think they're so, so clever. Funny. And it's like, bro, what if I just like. Don't, don't do that. I, uh, that really grinds my gears. Have some respect. That really plucks my pedals. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying to find other ways to... It really clogs my pipes, you know? <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> I get you, man. <laughs> thank you. That really just... Grinds my gears. It does. I said that. You did? Oh, mm-hmm. I ruined it. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, the most, that's the most generic one. Um, fair enough. That really... That really blows my gasket. <laughs> okay, car guy. Calm down. Sorry. <laughs> that really... Um... Oh, no. That really cools my hot chocolate. Dude, that sounds good right now. <laughs> For some hot cocoa. Get a little thirsty. Dude, that was so nice having hot cocoa on the Christmas Eve pod. Dude, we should do that more often. A beverage? Vitamin water? We've done it once. Mm-hmm. Oh, that really unclogs my pores. No, that really clogs my pores. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, that really, yeah, that really clog- twists my tongue. Nice. Okay. That really... um, Bunches up my trousers. Bud, okay. you're doing good. <laughs> you're doing good, bud. <laughs> oh, dang it! <laughs> mm, that really... That really puts a kettle corn between my teeth. Ooh. 
<laughs> Too specific. <laughs> you could have just said popcorn, but ah, oh, frick. Kettle corn is more sticky. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I keep itching my junk. <laughs> Straight up a pod. Cut that. <laughs> yeah. In there, dude. Oh, uh, man, that really corrupts my files, man. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Computers bringing in too many nerdy stuff. <laughs> corrupts my files. <laughs> that really, that really. <laughs> I'm looking around for stuff. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Uh, really, that really leaks on my sweater. <laughs> too close. <laughs> yeah, too close to home. That really, that really, Tom's my Peter. You know, that really marinara stains my carpet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, I think we're good there. Did you Did you like my Tom, my Peter? Because Tom Holland sucks as Peter. That was good. Yeah, that was good. You didn't catch on, bro. <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> it was good. So, anyways, um, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's yeah. let's talk about one more thing. One last thing. Because we, we talked about your crush and, and and I'm on board with you. It is, it's rarely. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. If any girl, I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so you're trying to pitch. <laughs> or yeah, I agree. Because it's that's a rare feeling to have, but it's a great feeling. It's terrifying and amazing at the same time. It's the best having a crush. <laughs> so so prepping for a date. Uh huh. Please explain. Oh yeah, I guess we'll hop right into that. Um, it's it's the next thing on the board. It makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> prepping for a date. This is how it goes for me. Mm-hmm. You're expecting a text or some sort of sorry, or <laughs> you see the thing pop up on your phone. So you're going to hate me, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. throw sucks. in the towel. Chalk that. It's yeah, yeah. Block them. <laughs> That's just Move a on. sad day for you. Yeah. Happens more often than it should, especially when it's an hour before. Yeah. When you planned your whole night around this, right? Yeah. So I, I've come to the realization that there's there's a really solid chance that she's going to bail. I don't necessarily think because of me or because of the date, because she's just going to bail. Girls bail. They're flaky. Yeah. Because most of the time, the time comes and she's like, actually, I don't really want to go on a date or she finds something better to do. Right. Yeah. Anyways, we've all been there mm-hmm. and, and you see that come up. So I've learned to be like, I, I can't plan it my whole night around this. I'll plan it. But it falls through. I can't be like, oh, great. Now what I'm going to do. Right. Well, I'll have like a backup kind of a thing. But let's say that for whatever reason, everything works normally. And she's like down to go out, right? Here's how it looks for me. I get ready. I start driving to pick her up or to meet her somewhere. Yeah. And for some reason, I've neglected to clean my passenger seat, which is my demon. Something yeah. I struggle with heavily <laughs> to where I leave so much. Trash, clothes, just like random things. Cause like I'm not married. I don't need anyone on my passenger seat unless I pick up a buddy. Yeah. So like it's like a great little storage unit for me. Threw but it's always there. like a dark realization when I'm like getting close and I look over and I'm like, oh no. I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah. And so you do the maneuver, pull into the gas station, <laughs> pull over, and then you you, you know run over to the other yeah. side, <laughs> start emptying your trash, and then you and then you're like, man, should I vacuum? Like, how clean is my car supposed to be? <laughs> Should I get air in my tires? What does this girl expect? <laughs> yeah. She's like, holy crap. Is that your tire pressure light on? <laughs> is your engine light on? Yeah. I'm out of here. Dang it. Um, I just thought it's a funny scenario that always happens to me. Have you ever experienced? I mean, you keep your car pretty clean. You're a car guy. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Where I realize I'm like a little unprepared? Yes. Yeah. Well, not with like the car thing, because I'm usually like, I, I keep my car pretty clean. <sighs> okay. Uh, I wish I were like you. I'm trying to think of things that I do go unprepared with. I would say that my, my biggest worry, which is weird because no one else cares and everyone else thinks it's great, but like I worry about my hair big time. Yes. You know that. You can feel the energy when I'm all like, oh, like, oh no, it doesn't look good. Right. Yeah, I just like, I'm like, bro, I just want my hair to look good, but which it does. That's what the people tell me. Does it look good? It's okay. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> that looks good. But yeah, I'm like, I'm like, yeah, clothes is, I'm like, clothes are just on point, okay? I smell great. My skin is clear. My car is clean, outside and in, right? Everything's perfect. I'm confident. My energy's up. The I only got thing. a lot of sleep. But I'm like, the whole way there, I'm just like looking in the mirror like, okay, I'm like, I got to make sure. <laughs> That's your demon, huh? Yeah, I'm just like, bro, why can't I just relax with the hair? That's why I kind of want to just like cut it all off. But I'm like, nah, dude, this thing's getting long. But then you're just going to cut it again once it gets long. We'll cut it too long. Like if it gets too long, I'll just cut it back to long. 
<laughs> I couldn't give you advice because my hair is blonde. Yeah, because you went plat. So sick. <laughs> you went so freaking dope. Yep. It's going to be. Yep, me. yep, yep. It's also just really nerve wracking when you like pull up to her apartment or um, her complex or her house or whatever. The first time, of course, I want to be a gentleman. Of course. Yeah. I want to go up to the door. Hey, how are you? I've never met this girl before. Yeah. Usually what I do is I pull up to the curb or in her driveway. And I'm pretty sure I've got the right address by this point, right? Yeah. But to ensure that I do, and also because I'm a little bit scared, I'll text her, hey, I think I'm here. Yeah. yeah. That way she kind of comes out, verifies that you are at the right place. And then I get out once I see her and I open the car door for her. Yeah. Second date, sure, I'll go up to the door. That's not a problem. The right. first date when I haven't met this girl and I walk up to her door, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, well, it's funny because for the first while of like adult dating, when I would do like mutual dates and and stuff like that, Instagram dates, yeah, I'd always just sit in the car and be like, I'm here, and then they come and get in. Yeah, and I was like, I, I don't really care about like having to do some certain thing, and I'm sure like a lot of girls were like that's weird, but it was just kind of like more convenient that way, you know, <laughs> to not get out and open her door for her, <laughs> yeah, just to sit in my car and <laughs> wait for dude. her. But I heard so many things of like, no, get out and get to the door, and I was like. A lot of times I'm picking up from apartment complexes and I don't know which yeah. one it is. It's kind of awkward. So I've done the in the middle, which I think you're kind of doing. Like once you see her, you like hop That's out and I open do, the yeah. door, which is great. For the first time. After that, I'll go out. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. Once once I, you know, things are, you know, more comfortable, then you'll go and I don't know do if I want thing. a girl coming and knocking on my door that I didn't know or I haven't seen before. Right. Yeah. You want it to be a little more comfortable. What I do is I park the car. I get out of the car while it's on mm -hmm. and I'm sitting outside okay. and then they come out and then I'm like, hey, how's it going? Right. So now it's like. I'm not like approaching you. You're not approaching me, but I'm still outside. I think that's safe. Then I open the door, but it is kind of suck when they're like, "Hey, one second. I'm like, <laughs> cold <laughs> it's outside. I'm like, oh. and like sometimes when it's cold, yeah, I'll sit in my car, and as soon as I see them, I hop out. So it's kind of the same vibe. Yeah, and I think I'm sure every guy does it differently. I go for the hug. I do go for the hug. Yeah. yeah. After I see her, you're I'm just like, like, I'm like, like okay, side hug. Kind of nope, thing. I go hug. I go hug. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, oh, that feels good. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> Third of the calm down. <laughs> No, I, I like put my arm out like this and then she can kind of make the choice from there to like which has been done before But I'm like really a lot of times. Yeah, they're like hey, and you're just like, okay, Dude, I get it We're the side hug is so weird. May as well give me a handshake. <laughs> What's that? I'm just gonna start <laughs> dapping them up yo, 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 yo. <laughs> <laughs> And that's fine, whatever, but I just think it's I think a side hug is more weird than a normal hug Like why am I like standing parallel with you? Yeah, like wrapping my arm around your waist on one side while our heads kind of touch. Like it's just weird. Yeah. It doesn't have to I be a sensual the shoulder. Okay. It doesn't have to be a sensual hug. Just like give me like a normal hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. No, I will no, say that. that's that's the oh. way to do it. No, oh, yeah. And if that makes him feel uncomfortable, Dude, then don't just, stop being weird. I don't know. Then maybe, maybe they have too many guys that are like <sighs> when they hug him and they're just like, I'm done hugging new guys. <laughs> Yeah, I think that the girls just have way too many negative experiences, so they don't want to do no, anything. And, which again, I, and I'm sure they have. I respect. But maybe me not having a bad experience giving someone a hug or it's like boundaries. Uh, I know you just met the person. I get that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I personally, I know it's probably a hot take. I think it's more weird doing anything else. Yeah, fair enough. I will say, though, that when you when you get a side hug, you're like, that's eh, not that nice. And then maybe when they're leaving, it's like a regular hug and then they leave. That's how it usually happens. Yeah. But then like when you get like a second or third date and they give you like the excited over the neck hug and you get to like wrap around their waist dude and it's like a good hug that's like ah oh man this this is yeah, like that a sound, reward that sounds well great, deserved that sounds, that sounds really cool have you not experienced that <laughs> <laughs> every episode is yeah you're just like <laughs> no no but that, that's a good feeling but yeah I just think that that whole situation is a little dicey mm. it's a little touchy no pun intended <laughs> the first couple times yeah yeah until yeah until you kind of get comfortable yeah you're walking on eggshells you are episode 8 yeah that's a wrap. That is a wrap. Talk about Mar Marvel. We talk about Spider Man, Marvel, Spider Man, Sp Sp Spider Man, and Marvel. <laughs> and we talk about Spider Man, Marvel. dating, dating, and crushes, manisms, manisms. Okay. Are we gonna include that? <laughs> <laughs> that last part. Yeah. Sure. Have you ever been upset at me? The only thing I'm upset is that blanket's not wrapped around me. <laughs> I have an actual legit question that I want to be on the podcast. Have you ever been legit pissed at me? Oh, always. <laughs> <laughs> you're expecting like, mm, not really. <laughs> you're like, no, dude, you're way cool. And it's like, I'm consistently pissed with you. <laughs> Same. 
Okay. <laughs> but I'm so pissed. You're like, don't want to touch you right now. Yeah. Hey, no, we, so seriously though? Uh, we love you guys. Brooke. <laughs> we'll see you later. All right, seriously.